While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Hey, Shalom, Officer Simakaya. Shalom, Officer Asa. Today we're going to be doing a class titled, Mark My Word. Mark My Word. We're going to start at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The uh, reason we're doing this class today, Mark My Word, because Israel, we got, a, we got a, um, a bad habit of operating on uh, so-called black people proverbs, the things that, that's talked about us before we came into the truth, of, with our time, saying we're going to do something and not doing it. We have a, a strong issue with that, so we're going to deal with some of those issues today and hopefully edify the nation of Israel. Read. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the, the script, the Bible says that this Bible that we read, which is the scriptures, the laws, is profitable for doctrine. Pull up that definition of doctrine. And we know, we, of course, we know precept upon precept. Doctrine is Proverbs 7 and 2. The doctrine is God's laws. But let's look at the, the, the uh, dictionary definition. Doctrine, definition. Doctrine. Doctrina. Instruction, learning from deco to teach, whence, doctor, docile, etc. In general sense, whatever is taught, hence a principle, view, or a set of opinions maintained by any person or set of persons. Whatever is laid down as true by an instructor or master, often instructed in confirmation in the truths of the gospel. So the doctrine or principle or what was laid down as true by, an, by our master, the Most High in Christ, is God's laws. So we have to learn to govern ourselves by God's laws, and that's by looking, looking and studying the scriptures that was given to us. That's why it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. We'll pull up that definition of reproof. So the doctrine that we are to govern our lives for that that's going to be profitable to us is the laws. Read that definition for reproof. Reproof. You can start, start at the highlighted part. To charge with a fault to the face. To charge with a fault to the face. Read. To chide. To reprehend. To express disapproval of. To reprove sin. To serve to admonish. Reproof, the expression of blame or censure addressed to a person. Blame expressed to the face. Censure for a fault. Reprehension, rebuke, reprimand. So this is something that a lot, of, a lot of Israel don't like. This is somebody telling you about yourself. Telling you that your ish do stink. That you ain't got everything right. And except just a, a simple example. If you, if you driving... And you run a red light. If you, in, in your mind, you may think, oh, this ain't nothing. You run a red light. But when that police officer turn them lights on and get behind you, and they walk up to the car and say, hey, you know how I pulled you over? I pulled you over because you just ran that red light. You just broke a law. That's that reproof. You, you ran a red light, now you got pulled over, and the police officer telling you about yourself. You, you ran that red light. Why did you ran that, run that red light? That's that reproof. And that's a small example. Uh, pull up the definition of correction, because now it says for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Just the highlighted part. Correction. Blow it up a little more for me. Pull it up so I can read from the top. Go back up to the. Yeah, there we go. Correct. Set right or made straight. In accordance with a certain standard, conformable to truth, rectitude or property, not faulty, free from error, to make correct or right, to bring into accordance with a certain standard, to remove error or defect from, 
to amend or amend to punish for faults or deviations from moral rectitude, to chastise, to discipline, to counteract, to aggravate. So if you look, if you look at this, if, if, if you look at this, keep that on the screen. If you look at this from a, a, a step-by-step um, mentality, so to say, when you look at this scripture, so the Bible is, 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 is profitable for doctrine, meaning you've, you've, you've learned in God's laws, you teach, you learn in a set of principles to live by, and then when you go wrong, you get reproof. You get told to your face what you did wrong. And then now, correction. So now the correction is you get, you get told, you get reprimanded. You get that ticket. You run a red light here in Chicago, we got red light cameras. When you run a red light, you get a picture in the mail. You get a, a ticket in the mail three months later for $100. And you don't even know what you, you look at the picture and look at it. And like, what is this? That's correction. So read this, the, the second part, the correction part. Correctable. Uh, correction. The act of correcting the removal of faults or errors, something written to point out an error or substitute it in the place of what is wrong. Punishment, discipline, chastisement, critical notice, admiral, admiral version, animal, animal version, animal version, the counteraction of what is inconvenient or hurtful. In its effects. In its effects. In its effects. In its effects uh, of what is inconvenient, that's hurtful. So that's it. That's it. You can take that down. So the reproof, you being told your fault to your face. Correction is, in this, in this example, the correction is you're going to get that ticket. You're going to get that $100 ticket. You're going to get that whatever ticket. That's the correction so that you don't do it again. Then, so the Bible is profitable for doctrine. Being, but principles that you're supposed to live by for reproof, you being told to your face when you go against those principles, for correction, you get a discipline. You get some type of punishment for that, for that wrong. And then instruction and righteousness. Read that definition for instruct. Instruct, definition. To teach, to educate, to impart knowledge of information to it to enlighten, to direct, or command, to furnish with orders, to order, or enjoin. So, instruction. So, instruction in righteousness. Another, another example. When you receive instruction, using the same example of you driving. Um, I know I remember some time ago, not too long, when I took driver's ed, it was taught in driver's ed, if, you, if you're approaching a, a stale green light, to be prepared to stop when that light turned yellow and red so you don't run a red light. That's instruction. It's instructing you how not to red run a red light. That's what the Bible is to us. The Bible is in, if we study and apply, it's instructions given to us so that we don't go off, so that we don't go against what the Most High God commanded us. So from there, go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 33. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 33. So the ho- overall, the, the Bible is our blueprint. The Bible is what we're supposed to go to to, to get the instruction, to get the principles, to get the, the, the things that we need to live a successful life. Read that. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 33. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forswear thyself but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Read on. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. So one of the things that's, that's common in the, in, the, in the black community, as we come up, you got, you got brothers that, that have this thought process, the things that they say. Man, on my mama, I put that on my mama, man. On beanie head. On my head, man, I, I wouldn't lie to you. On phone them. Uh, on everything. Man, I swear to, I mean, I swear, man, that those are, this is what this is going to you. Let your yay be yay and your nay nay. Read. 
Verse 35, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. So when we, when we trying to prove a point or say we're going to do something, it's on everybody head and everybody, everybody mama head, everybody grandma head, on my children, on my seed that ain't here. It's all these things that you're making a, making a promise or a pact that you're going to do something or you did something when the scripture letting us know that, no, nah, you're not supposed to do that. That's not how we're supposed to govern ourselves. Read. Verse 36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. So we are coming up, we, we say things like, man, I put that on my head. I put that on my life, on my soul. But you ain't got the power to, to say you're going to live to, that you're going to wake up tomorrow, you're going to wake up tonight, that you're going to live to see tonight. But we, we do those things. And then it's true for a lot of us, but we don't say those things no more. But some of our actions still exhibit those thought processes. A lot of the actions that we do still exhibit those same thoughts. Even though we're not saying it out of our mouth, we're doing it in our actions. It's still evident in our actions because we're doing that. Because a lot of times when you talk to somebody, when you talk to Jacob that do that when we grew up, you talk to them and do that, when they're doing all of that, they lying. They ain't finna do nothing that they said they're going to do. They ain't did what they said they was doing. They saying those things to try to make it valid, to try to validate their point to make it seem like they about something. But in all, all they lying through their teeth. And a lot of us, we don't say those things, but we still live out those actions. And that's not how we're supposed to be. Read on. Let me read verse 37 yet. Read that. Verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. So we're supposed to say, yes, I'm going to do this. No, nah, I'm not going to be able to do this. Yes, I'll be there. No, nah, I'm not going to be able to be there. Yo, let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. Is that it? Nope. Is that it on that? Read for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. You add any other words, you add anything else to it, it's evil. Now you, 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 you're on the verge of being deceitful and lying. Now, go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 4. Pull up that definition of vow. Pull up that definition of vow. Because as we are in this truth, we got we to gotta learn to walk, walk uprightly. Say what you mean and mean what you say. If you say you're going to do something, do it. No matter how difficult it may be, you may say you're going to do something, and then that day come and something come up. You already said you was going to do it. You got you to gotta deliver. You can't, oh, no, nah, I can't do this. Of course, out, outside of emergency things where you, with that, that, that uh, make it impossible for you to do it, those things, we ain't talking about that. We talking about things that you can control and say, no, nah, I already made this commitment. No, nah, I already said that I'm going to do this. That's one thing that we have to learn how to do. We have to learn how to keep our words. We can't say we're going to do things, something and then turn around and not do it. Whatever the reason, if it ain't emergency, emergency or a drastic measure, you got to deliver for what you said you're going to do. Uh, read that definition. Vow. Vow, hence, really the same word as vote. Uh, you can start at uh, a solemn promise. A solemn promise, an engagement, solemnly enter into an oath made to God or to some deity to perform some act of fulfillment of certain conditions, a promise to follow out some line of conduct or to, to, or to devote oneself to some act or service. To promise solemnly to give, consecrate, or dedicate by a solemn promise as to a divine power. Uh, that's it, that's it. So, anything you, in a nutshell, anything that you commit to doing that you say you're going to do, you have made a vow to do it. You have, you have made, you, if, if. Let's say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be at the, I'm gonna be I'm gonna come to the school. I'm gonna I'm gonna come in your house and help you move your couch around. And then the day come you're not there. You just broke your vow. You just broke your vow to your brother. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna be at the school to help move the chairs or go get this out of storage or or help clean or do this or do that. Then the day come, oh man, you know what? I ain't even gonna be able to do it. But 
two days ago you said that you was going to be able to do it. Obviously, either, either one, you didn't really count the cost and think that if you had something going on, or you just don't care. and You're just speaking vain words. You're just speaking and not really thinking about what you, you're not thinking about the consequences before you speak. You're not thinking about the things that you might already have lined up before you speak. Now you're breaking, you're breaking a vow. You're being deceitful. You're being a liar. That's really what, what it boils down to. You say you're just going to do something, and if ain't nothing emergency, ain't, if, it, if an emergency didn't, didn't come up and you don't deliver, you are now found a liar. And, too, and so much, it's only so much of that where anything you say is going to be like, man, I don't, yeah, all right, he ain't going to be there, whatever. You ain't even going to be counted in the numbers that say you're going to be there because your word is nothing. And that's, that's, a, that's a spirit that we can't roll in as we are in this truth because that's a deceitful spirit. Read, uh, read that, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 5. And verse 4. And verse 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. Now, this scripture is, is referring to a vow that we make with the Most High God. So, but I'm going I'm to I'm tie this, I'm going to correlate it to dealing with your brother. So this is something that, this right here, this scripture is referring to us vowing a vow to the Most High God. Like many of us, we came into this truth. And when we first heard the truth, we were sorrowful. We were remorseful. We, we found out we was the Israelites. We found out we was breaking the commandments. And it broke us. It broke us down. We like, dang, I was wicked all this time. I thought I was, go I was going to church. I was doing this on the streets. I was doing this and that. And I was, I was going in the wrong direction. And we're like, you know what? Father, forgive me, man. I'm going to go hard for this. That zeal, it come in, but then when that zeal fade away, a lot, of, a lot of us revert back to the old man, revert back to our old ways. But we're not supposed to be like that because you made a vow. You made a vow. When you, uh, when you uh, what, Psalms 50, we made a covenant. When you come back and when you come into this truth and you make, you make that vow that you're going to serve the Lord, that's a vow. No matter, it ain't based on your feelings, it's based on your discipline. Read on. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for uh -huh. he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. So with the most high God, if you say, if you, if you make an oath to, that you're going to do something, if you say that, <clears throat> if you say you're going to serve the most high God, but then you don't deliver, you breaking you breaking a, a vow with the Most High God. So, remember the scriptures say, "Love your neighbor as you love yourself." So if you if you do it to, if you're not supposed to do it with God, you're not supposed to do it with your brother, because none of us seen let like the scriptures say, "No man has seen God at any time." How you how can you make a vow to God and say you're gonna keep it, but then when you make a vow amongst your brothers, amongst the sisters, you can't keep it. That means you ain't even get, you, you, you're, not, you're not keeping the commandments. You're not doing what's required of you. Read on. Verse 5. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. So dealing with the Most High, it's better that you don't even open your mouth to say that you're going to do something if you're not 100% sure that you're going to do it. Because if you, if you say you're going to do it, if you say you're going to uh, fulfill, fulfill something and then you don't fulfill it, you a fool. It's better to not vow. It's better to say, you know what, I, I ain't going to be able to do it. It's better not to vow that you're going to do something than to vow it and then not deliver. That stains your name. That stains you and your character. Read. Verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. So it's sin. When you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, that's a sin. Why? Because you just lied. That falls under the commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness with thy neighbor. That's a lie. Read. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore, should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? So now it, it, it says, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. So you vow, vow, and don't deliver, you have just committed sin. And then when you called on it, it says, neither say thou before the angel that, 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 that it was an error. Oh, now you lying. No, you know what? I ain't really mean to say that. No, you did mean to say it. You just didn't stand on your word. And it says, wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of your hands? So with the Most High God, dealing with us and the Most High God, 
we came into this truth, we repented, we start, put, we start growing our beards, we start putting on the fringes, we start, um, we start applying the commandments. We said we're going to serve the Lord. Okay, I see that we, the reason why we're in this captivity, because we broke the commandments, you know what, I'm going to get myself right. But then you start straying off and veering away. That means you're breaking your vow against the Most High God. So now let's go to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. Because like when you, we read in the definition with making a vow, we read in the definition when you make a vow, it's like it's a solemn promise. To God, it's, it's, a, it's like a prayer to the Most High. So now we're going we're gonna to bridge that with how you deal with your brother. Read that. First John chapter 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love God and so hate of his brother. If a man say, I love God, read. And hate of his brother, he is a liar. So if you say you love God, but you hate your brother, you a liar. You said, man, read it again. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. So just think about that. If you say that, hey, I'm about this truth. Hey, whatever, whatever it take, I'm about this work. Whatever it take, I'm going to get myself right. And you're saying, I'm going to get myself right to the most high God because Hey, I'm still alive for this day. So I'm a man. Whatever it takes, hey, I'm going 10,000 times more. You make this commitment to the, to, most, to the most high God, but then you turn around and can't keep your word with your brother. You turn around and when you say you, you say you're going you gonna to be somewhere to help your brother, you say you're going to be somewhere for your rank man. You say, you know what, I'm going to be at the school on such and such day to, to clean, or I'm going to be at the school on such and such day to, to, to let the – the, the HVAC guy in so he can clean the, the thing. Then a day later, the day before, nah, I ain't gonna be able to make it. How, how uh, I mean, you do it 30 minutes before the time or an hour before. How, how, do you, how do you say you love God? How do you say you can make a vow to the most high God but you can't keep your vow with men? Read on. If a man say I love God and hate of his brother, he is a liar. He says, if, if, you, if, you can, if you say out your mouth that you make a commitment to do something for the Most High God, but then with your brother, you make a commitment and don't keep it, you a liar. You don't love your brother. Read. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen. So you, this is part of you loving your brother. If you, if you, if you say you're going to do something, you got to deliver. You got to keep your word. You got to be the man that's, that can say, hey, mark my word. I said I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it done. I'm going to get it done no matter what, by any means necessary. I said it. I'm going to do it. Otherwise, read that again. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? So if you can't keep a vow with your brother that you can see every day, that when you, when you, um, you say you're going to be somewhere at 9, you show up 15 minutes late. You got to see your brother and explain to your brother why you was late. But God, you can't see. God, you can't see. How, 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 are you, how can you say that you, 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 gonna, you can keep a vow to God or you love God, but then yet your brothers that's, here, that's with you, you can't even say, hey, man, hey. Do we got to be here at 9 or, or I'm going to be there at 9, but then you wake up at 8.45 and you, it calls you to be 15, 20, 30 minutes late. And then even worse, we're going to go on to that later. Even worse, somebody calls you be like, hey, where you at? Oh, I'm on my way, but you just rolled out the bed. You're not on your way. How are you on your way and you just rolled out the bed? That's, that's a deceitful spirit. That's a lie. That's how we used to roll in the world. That's black people thing. That's uh, what they call it, black people time, colored time. That's not, what, that's not how we're supposed to roll in this truth. If, 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 you're, if you're running late for something and your brother call you, hey, man, where you at? Man, my bad. I, I, just, I just got up, man. I overslept. Be honest. You wrong, but be honest. Like, damn, you know what? I messed up. I just got up, man. I just got up. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about to get ready. And I, I let you, I'm going to hit you up and let you know what time I'm going to be there. 
that's, that's, what, that's what it takes. Instead of, I'm around the corner. I'm, I'm five minutes away. I'm right around the corner. No, you're not. You ain't left the house yet. That's, that's not how we're supposed to roll. Uh, was that it? Was that 21? Yeah, read 21. Verse 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he who love, he that, that he who loveth God love his brother also. So it says, he that loveth God love his brother also. That's why when you read uh, Matthew 22, when the, um, was it the, uh, the, 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 the lawyer that asked Christ, what was the great commandment? Christ told him the, great, the greatest commandment was to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself. That's the, that's the, the uh, and this, then he say, let's get that. Let's read that real quick. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Because what we got to, we have to understand that how we treat one another is ultimately how we feel about the most high. We don't, we don't understand that, but in our repentance, we got to come to understand that. We can't say out of our mouth that we love God, but then we're doing everything in our power to offend the, our brother and our sister. We can't, we can't roll like that. Read. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And notice, he says, which is the great commandment to you Christians out there. He says, what's the great commandment? Not what's the, what's the new commandments or what's the only commandment. He said, what is the great commandment? Read. Verse 37, Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So this, this here is the commandment, the ten, out of the ten commandments, these are the commandments that deal with us dealing with the Most High God. The first four commandments, read. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He says, and the second is like unto it. So the, the first and great commandment is the love of the good Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That means everything you're about is about the, the most high God. And then he said, the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Read. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Wait a minute. Do it say those are the only two commandments? On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So it says on these two hang the law and the prophets. Meaning the commandments are just as they were, ev uh, they were evident for us to keep back in the Old Testament. They evident for us to keep today. On on these two, these are the the purpose of you keeping the commandments, because you're showing your love to the Most High God, and you're showing your love, you're showing love to your brother. So it's very essential that we understand that and know that. And back to what it said in First John, we show how we show. In, in essence, we show. We show how we love the Most High God by how we treat our brother. Because the commandments show us we learning how to build a nation. We learn, if we're learning how to build a nation, that means that we got to learn, we got to know how to deal with our brother and sister. And we got to deal uprightly because that's going to show the love that we have for the Most High God. From there, go to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. One of the things we, we got to really understand, because all of us had... That, that one friend we grew up with, or that cousin, that brother, that sister, that always spoke about what they was going to do, how they was going to do it, this, that, and the third, and they never delivered. And, and we all can remember that person, every time they spoke out their mouth, we, walk, we walked away like, yeah, all right, we, I believe it when I see it. We don't want to have that reputation in this truth. In this truth, we want to have a reputation that, hey, he's about his word. He said he gonna do something. Hey, he gonna show. He gonna for sure. He gonna for sure deliver. He gonna make sure it happen. Even if he gotta jump through loops and holes, he said it. He gonna make sure it happen. That's the reputation we gotta have in this truth. We keep gotta leave that old man back in the dirt. Read Matthew chapter twelve and verse thirty six. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. It says every idle word. Every idle word that men speak, you're going to have to give account for it. You're going to have to give account for it. Was that 36 and 37? Nope. Read 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. 
So the things that we say out of our mouth, we're going to be judged by those things. So if you if you saying things and you keeping your word, when judgment day come, you good. Your book is gonna be good. But if you saying you just speaking out the just saying stuff, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You know what? I'm gonna be there. Hey, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you. Um, I'm gonna help you move. I'm gonna help you do this. I'm gonna help you do that. And you never do it. You are gonna be judged for that because that's speaking idly. Pull up that that uh, definition. Definition, uh, now idle words, empty rhetoric or insincere or exaggerated talk. Meaning you just talking to sound good. The words that come out your mouth, you have no intention on delivering or making it happen. You're just talking to make it sound good. Read. That's a lot of wind. Don't give me any of that jazz. Jazz, malarkey, malarkey. Nothingness, wind, talk, talking, an exchange of ideas via conversation. Let's have more work and let's talk around here. So when you when you speaking empty rhetoric, empty rhetoric or insincere words, in exaggerated talk, you're gonna be judged, and that judgment ain't gonna be sweet because you're just talking so you can sound good. You 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 uh, what's the word? You talking so you can sound good. We're going to leave it at that. You speaking great swelling words. You talking, but you, you had no intention to, you have no intention to deliver the things that you said. That means you being insincere. So when you speaking those idle words, and we in the truth, you know, a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters, we on Telegram. That's going into that too. You go on Telegram, you answer a poll. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm, I'm, I'm sign up for this. I'm going to sign up for that. Hey, sign me up for that office. Hey, put me on this team. But then you get put on the team and you don't do nothing. Somebody got to pull your ear like the, like the, uh, the grandmas used to pull the little boy ear. You got to pull your ear for you to get you to do something. We ain't doing that for, in this truth. You, you got you to gotta do it just, you got to have a willing mind and a willing spirit to do the things that's required of you. Nobody's going to force you. So you have to be very careful what you say you're going to do and what you say, you, what you say you're going to deliver. Because every idle word it's gonna, you're going to have to give account for it. You're going to have to give account for it. Go to Sirach chapter 20 and verse 5. You're going to be judged by the very things that come out of your mouth. So it's, as we in this truth, we in our repentance, it's expedient for us to think before we speak. Think about the cause and the effect, the pros and the cons, before we actually do something. Of course we're supposed to be, we're supposed to um, seek the Lord ten times the more. We're supposed to be doing, we're supposed to be pushing ourselves to come up out of that a slothful spirit. We're supposed to be pushing ourselves to do those things, but we also got to know ourselves. We got to know what we can and can't do. You can't, if, if, if you're able to, hey, get, get the things done. But don't be saying you could do something and you know, you know dang on well that you can't do it. You know dang well that you ain't going to be able to deliver, but you're speaking just so you can sound good in front of the brothers. You, sound, you can sound good in front of the sisters. you just speaking so People can look, hey, yeah, he, you, so people can say that, but then when it comes time to deliver, you ain't know where to be found. You don't want to be that guy. Read that. Sirach chapter 20 and verse 5. There was one that keepeth silent and is found wise, and another by much babbling becometh hateful. So when, when for you ranked men across the board, when, when a poll come out, when an order come out, something come out, don't, don't be quick to raise your hand and you know you ain't going to be able to deliver. For you brothers, don't, don't be quick to raise your hand and you know you ain't going to be able to deliver. Don't be quick to say you're going to do something and you know you don't, you, you don't have the capacity to actually do it. Or you don't have the will to do it. I ain't going to say the capacity because anybody, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Anything that you're willing to do, you can accomplish. But when you say you're going to do something and you ain't willing to do it, it's the scripture say, it says, read that again. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise. There's one that keeps silence and is found wise. Read. And another by much babbling becometh hateful. You become hateful because you're just speaking. You're just saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You say you're going to do ten things and did one of them. That's a, that gives you a bad name. Nobody gonna, don't, nobody gonna, ain't nobody going to try to want to call on you. Ain't nobody going to be able to rely on you for nothing. You're not dependable. 
you have stained your name. You can't say, mark my word. Because anytime you say something, it's going to fall on deaf ears. It's going to be like you didn't say it. That's how it's going to, that's how, if you got a reputation like that, the words that come out your mouth is going to fall on deaf ears. It's going to be, it's going to be as if you never said it because you're speaking and you exaggerating your talk, exaggerating your character. You're doing things that, you're saying things that you're not willing to do and you're not going to do. That's getting yourself a bad name. And then it, so you, you, us in this truth, we got to think before, we got to think before we speak, weigh our options. We got to actually think about things before we commit to something. Whether if you got, if you, if you, if you work and you got a, um, you got the ability to control your schedule or things like that. If you say you're going to do something, you can't just be like, hey, something came up. How something came up and you got control over your time. You committed to something. You committed to do something. You got control over your time, but you say, oh, something came up. If it wasn't no emergency, that means you really didn't intend on doing the thing that you said you was going to do. Because if you, if you, if you make, if you, and that's one thing, a brother that work a job, they work a nine to five, and let's say, they say, let's say a, a Wednesday, Thursday, they say they're available for something. And they job, they go into work Wednesday, and the job be like, hey, you got to come in and work tomorrow. It ain't, hey, you got to come in or, or you getting real up. You, that's, that's, out your, that's out your control. But in a situation where you, could, you, had a, you got control over your time and you say you're going to do something and then the, t- the day come, the time come, and you don't do it. And then you, and you, and worse than that, you don't, even give the, you don't even give a good window of time for people to make adjustments. You, you're deceitful. You, you, you're building yourself a bad name if that's, your, if that's your regular behavior. One or two times, okay, cool. But if every time something comes up, and you always, oh, no, nah, I can't do it. No, nah, I can't do it. I know I said I could do it, but no, nah, I ain't going to be able to come. Oh, no, nah, I ain't going to be able to go over there. You, you, gotta, you are developing a bad name, and now everything you say is going to be like, all right, whatever. It's going to be like you ain't said. It. It's, it's going to be, that's, what, that's how it's going to be because you never delivered. You never actually deliver on your word, so ain't nobody going to be able to say, hey, you can mark his word. He say he's going to do something, hey, he's going to deliver it. He's going to be sure to make sure it happens. Go to Proverbs 10 and 19. Cause that's, that's one thing that we got to, it's easy to say something, but it's another thing to say something and actually carry it out. It's another thing to say something and actually do it. And a lot of times we just talk. A lot of Israel got the gift of jab. Is that a no? That ain't jab. Gift of gab. Gift of gab. A lot of Israel got the gift of gab. Talk your ear off. Make everything sound good. Excellent storyteller. Tell you the world. But then when it comes to deliver, like man, man, this brother said he was gonna do this. He been saying he gonna do this for a year, and he still ain't did it. Hey, this brother said he gonna he gonna uh, he gonna get this he gonna get this computer to join. IT. He been saying this for a year, and he he still ain't got a computer. He said he going he going he gonna get this computer so he can learn how to edit. And it been two it been a year two years. He still ain't got the computer to learn how to edit. Like all right, man. He ain't like it's, we have to count the cost before we speak and actually do those things that we say we're gonna do. Read that. Proverbs chapter ten and verse nineteen. In the multitude of words, there want if not sin. So this that brother got the gift of gab. You saying you could do this, you could do that, you could do everything. You could do, you could carry the world if you was able to, but you never deliver. You saying all these things. That's a multitude of words. You just you just speaking words of flattery. Read it again. In the multitude of words, there want of not sin, but he that refrain of his lips is wise. So you, the person that is talking about all this stuff he can do, but not really sitting down and counting the cost and making sure he deliver it. You in the midst of sin because you you making commitments and then you breaking them. You making commitments and breaking them. But then read that last part again. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. He that refrain his lips. That brother that see the opportunity to to go and help the brother out. Go go help move something at the school. Go help clean something at the school. Go help fix something at the school. This brother, the brother that's found wise, is you know what? Let me. Hey man, am I gonna be able to do it? Let me see. Make sure I ain't got nothing going on. Let me look at my work schedule. Let me look at 
my family schedule. Let me look at this. Let me look at, let me make sure I got, let me make sure I'm available at that time to get this done. And then when you see you're available, you say you're going to do it. Hey, I'm going to do it. Because the thing is, the test is going to come. You're going to say you're going to do something, and everything in the world is going to drop. All the bombs going to start dropping to see, to get you to not keep your word. All the excuses in the world going to come up. You're going to oversleep. You're going to do everything in the world is going to come up to get you to break your word. And those are things that we got to, in this truth, we got to learn how to, okay, all this stuff happened, bombs dropping everywhere, but, hey, I said I'm going to do, I said I'm going to do such and such. Hey, I'm gonna, I got to get it done. Ain't no excuses. The only, only excuse is an emergency situation, something detrimental happened where you are absolutely unable to do it or something that's out of your control. Those are things that, okay, it's understandable. But then when you're just blatantly doing it every time after time after time after time, you're not delivering on your word, you are scouring your name. Your name is nothing. Your name is dirt because nobody's going to believe what you say. Go to Sirach chapter 4, and t- excuse me, Sirach chapter 4 and verse 29. So in this truth, we got to be that, and we got to be that brother. We got to be that sister that say, hey, mark my word. Hey, I'm going to get this done. We got to be that brother and sister that when our name come up, the leadership, hey, that's a good brother. That brother going to get this done. That brother going to get that done. That brother said he going to do this. Oh, he going to, you can trust he going to do that. When you brothers and sisters that's looking for brothers and sisters, you, you looking to prove. You, know, you go up to, to the leadership for that brother. You go up to the leadership for sister. Oh, yeah, that's a good brother. He, he about this. He about that. Because that brother say he going to do something and he do it. That sister say she going to do something and she do it. They ain't got a thousand and one excuses. You made a commitment. You deliver that commitment. When you say, when you say you're going to be somewhere, that's a commitment. In essence, that's a vow to your brother that, hey, I'm going to come and help you do this. I'm going to help come and help you do that. And God forbid you get sick, something like that, we understand. But when you just, oh, no, nah, man, I got something else that came up. Oh, man, I, I double scheduled myself. What? I mean, you didn't, you didn't count the cost. You didn't think before you spoke. Read that. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 29. Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deed slack and remiss. So the scriptures tell us, don't be hasty in your tongue, and then when it comes time to deliver, you slack. You ain't nothing happen. You didn't make proper plans to actually get done what you said you was gonna get done. You said you was gonna do it, but then you just you said it, and then you just forgot it. As quick as you said it, it left out your mind. You ain't even remember you said it. Oh, I said that? Dang. We can't, we can't roll like that in this truth. We got to be men. We got to be men of our word. We got to be sisters. We got to be women of your word. You gotta, when you say you're going to do something, you got you to gotta be able to do it. You can't just be speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and never delivering and never delivering. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Read that again. Sirach chapter 4, verse 29. Be not hasty in thy tongue. Don't be hasty in your tongue to speak anything. That sound familiar. We just read in Ecclesiastes 4 about making the vow to the Most High God. It said, let's get that real quick. Let's go back to the whole list and it says, we right here in Ecclesi- in Sirach chapter 4 and 29, it says, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter so 5. So before you read that, it says, Sirach 4 and 29, it said, be not hasty in thy tongue and in thy deeds slack and remiss. Read that in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. Defer not to pay it. I mean, and don't delay. That's what, that's the same thing in Sirach. 4 and 29 is saying, be not hasty in your tongue, and in thy deed slack and remiss. you deferring to get it done. Same thing. So that's, as, as we in this truth, we growing in this truth, we got to put them, them old, we got to put them proverbs that's spoken openly in the world about us, we got to put them to shame. We got to actually change the way that we move and the way that we do things. Because we, when, we, when we don't, when we say we're going to do something, when we don't do it, and it's a, re, a, rep, a, a repetitive history of that, you roll it in a deceitful spirit. 
You roll, roll in the spirit of falsehood and lies. You're not pleasing before the Most High God. Go to Proverbs, I mean Psalms chapter 120 and verse 1. That's a deceitful spirit. Before, before we read that, read this um, definition of deceit. Deceit, definition, the action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. So the action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. When you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're misrepresenting the truth. You knew you wasn't going to be able to do it before you said you was going to do it. You misrepresenting the truth. You have to think before you speak. Because really, and then also, that's a, that's a man-pleasing spirit. You saying what sound good so you can please the man that's asking you, please the man or woman that's asking you, asking you for something. You, that's what, that you rolling in the man-pleasing spirit. Because you saying, oh, yeah, I could do it. No one dang on well, you can't do it. But you saying yes so you can appear good before men. That's a, that's a man-pleasing spirit. We got to be very watchful for that. Uh, read that. Psalms chapter 120 and verse 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. So when your man is, so as we in this truth, this is this got to be our thought process. This has got to be our prayer before the Most High God. Hey, get that spirit up off of me. That spirit is hateful to you. I hate it too. We got to, we got to, that's part of us renewing our mind. Read. What you read? You read, you read Psalms 120? Yep, 120. Uh, read, read one again. Psalms chapter 120 and verse 1. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Uh-huh. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. This got to be our prayer in this truth. Hey, deliver me from a lying tongue, uh, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Deliver me, deliver me from that spirit, roll out the bed. Hey, 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 I'm on my way. But you, you just got out the bed. Deliver us from colored people time. That's deceitful lips. You, you rolling on colored people time. You rolling on black people time. You, you, you should be ashamed of saying you from the tribe of Judah. Saying that you an Israelite. Because you ain't, you, ain't, you, you ain't living by that byword no more. You're not black. So you got to get off. You got to wean yourself off that spirit of that colored people time. Or the, the spirit of, yeah, that's what it is, it's color people time. You, you can't roll in that same spirit. I'm, that's the spirit of the world. I'm right around the corner, but you're 30 minutes away. I'm right around the corner. That's, that's, pull that definition of deceit back up. Because that's something that, that we as Israel, we got it bad. And this is for a lot of you rank men too. Supposed to be at the school at a certain time. And every single Sabbath, brothers, oh, I ain't gonna be, I'm gonna be there at 9 15, 10 15, this, this, that. And it's like, bro, like, ain't nothing changed. We've been getting it, we, we, we come to the school at the same time every week. But every week, you got the same problem. You ain't, you ain't examined yourself, like, man, why am I, why am I always late? Why am I never on time? Why am I never getting to the school when I'm supposed to be at the school? That's something you got to, it's something in your spirit that you got to fix. Read that definition. Deceit definition. The action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting the truth. You deceiving by misrepresenting the truth. First, first, the first step, you got to be honest with yourself. Like, dang, you know what? I ain't never on time. You know what? Dang, I'm always saying, hey, I'm right around the corner. I'm 15 minutes away, but yet you live an hour away and you ain't left the house yet. That ain't the spirit we're supposed to roll in. Read, the, uh, read that Urban Dictionary of Color People Time. Urban Dictionary, Color People's Time, Black People Time, Black Folk Time, BP Time, BPT, Color People's Time, Colored People's Time, CP Time, or CPT. Now we know that uh, when you look in the when you read the scriptures, it say that, that Esau changed the times and all of that. Hey, this ain't part of the Esau, Esau that's changing the times. You got your own you got your own time zone. We don't have our own time zone. Stop rolling in that spirit. That's a deceitful spirit. Pull it back up. No. 
Uh, yeah, read that note. No, this is a stereotypical, stero sorry, stereotyping of African Americans, black people, as not punctual, frequently or constantly being late. It's a stereotype, and it's sad. This is a stereotype. It's a proverb, but it's a sad thing to say that it's just about on point for majority of Israel. You got some of us, some of, some of Israel that is on point, be punctual, on time. You can always rely on them. But some is most of the majority of Israel that's on that's still operating on color people time. It, it, we you just can't get right. Hey, the event started at six, but everybody show up at eight o'clock. At six o'clock, it's only two people at the. It's only two three people at the door. But then the event now the event got to get pushed back because ain't nobody there. That's color people time. You rolling in that spirit, you got to repent. Of course, we know things, things, when certain, like I said, when, when it's an emergency, things happen, we understand. But if that's just how you're rolling, you're rolling in the spirit of the world. You're not rolling as an Israelite. You're not rolling as a repentant Israelite. You're rolling in the spirit of the world. Read on. Uh, number two, time that is kept convenient to one person, but not another, especially in business or personal matters. Think about that. The scriptures say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But right there, that definition we just read, you all you're thinking about, it's me, myself, and I. You're only thinking about you. Yeah. I get up when I want to get up. Hey, man, it's the day of rest, man. I'm supposed to go sleep. You're not thinking about nobody else but you. That's not the spirit that we're supposed to roll in. The scriptures say, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Let's finish that in Psalms 120. Uh, read, read on. Verse 3. What read, shall read, read two, read two again. Psalms 120, verse 2. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. Verse 3. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? So the, so the, so the prayer is, hey, deliver my soul. In the prayer, David say, deliver my soul from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. That's supposed to be our prayer. We came out, of, we came out whether you've been in when you, when you was in the world 20, 30, 40 years, you learned a lot of BS. There's a lot of stuff that's in your sub in your unconscious mind. You don't even want to go down that road, the stuff that's in our unconscious mind, and we don't even know it's there until we hear it, and it just come right back to the front. But it's a whole lot of stuff. That's why the scriptures say you got to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And part of that transformation is us praying to the Most High God. So then the question is, what's going to be given Unto the deceitful tongue and the lying lips. What's going to be given to that man that roll in that spirit? What shall be done unto thee, O false tongue? The question, this is the question. So what's going to be done unto that person? Read on. Verse 4. Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Destruction. When them bombs drop, you're going to be destroyed with them. You're going to be destroyed with the, the heathen. You're going to be destroyed because you refuse to get your mind right. You refuse to put away that deceitful spirit. You refuse to be transformed. You, 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 you refuse to be converted by God's laws. So that's what we have to do. We got to understand that. If we don't get rid of that spirit, you live in a lie. That's a, that's a, that's a, it's a, it's a heavy spirit to get up off of because we grew up, a lot of us grew up, hey, you, when we was in the world celebrating all the BS, we, it was always late to the events, late to the, the, the family reunions, late to everything. But now in this truth, you got to put that spirit off of you. That spirit got to be put to death. It got to be put in the coffin because that's not how we're supposed to roll. If you, if you say you're going to do something, you got to do it. If you say you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, you got to do it. If a, if a time is set for you to be somewhere, you got to make sure that you do everything you got to do to make sure you're on time, to make sure you're there. And then uh, I know it's a saying, if you if you own time, you late. But if you if you help me out, if you if you early, that's okay. If you early, you own time. But if you own time, you late. That's what we gotta start thinking in our mind. We gotta get. If you live thirty minutes, let's say you you going to a, you going to work, you you going to, and then it's crazy because a lot of us we going to work, we ain't got no problem. But then when they got to deal deal with our brother, deal with doing something for the school, now we. Two hours late, three hours late, twenty minutes late, and it's consistent. So what we got to do? One of the ways to fix that 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 timing 
we got to tell ourselves, you know what? I live 30 minutes from the school. I live 45 minutes from the school. You know what? I'm going to leave out an hour. I'm gonna, if I live 30 minutes, I'm going to give myself a 30-minute window just in case something happens so I'm still on time. Because many of us do that for work. Our commute to work is 30 minutes. We don't, we don't leave our house exactly 30 minutes to get to work because then you're going to be late. You're going to be pulling in the parking lot in 30 minutes. No, we don't do that. We give ourselves time. A lot of us, I ain't going to say everybody. Everybody don't do it, but a lot of us give ourselves time. We get to work. We get to work. We got time to sit, sit for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we go to, go to work. But we don't, we don't let that spirit translate into the truth. We don't give ourselves a, a window of error. We're supposed to give ourselves a margin of error when you're dealing with time. If you're supposed to be somewhere at 9 o'clock and it takes you 30 minutes to get there, you should leave at 8 o'clock. 7.45, 8 o'clock. So that way, if there's an accident, let's say you got to take a detour, you're still going to be on time. Unless it's just something detrimental where they block the roads and you can't, ain't no detour. But on a, on a given scale, you're going to be, if, ain't nothing, if don't nothing happen, then hey, you're going to be on time. You ain't got to worry about it. But if something happened, you got a window of opportunity to be able to maneuver, detour, whatever you got to do, and you're still going to be on time. That's the, that's the way we got to think being in this truth. Because anything else, you're you deceiving yourself. You deceive, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving. You're, walking, you're rolling in the spirit of deceit, and we got to put that spirit up off of us. Uh, pull up that video real quick. We're going to watch a little quick video dealing with the color people time because this is this is the spirit of the world and this is this is how it is we act like it's normal and it's not normal it's not a normal thing being repented israelites at this year's NACPT summit we'd like to recognize those individuals who made significant contributions to our cause now cpt or color people's time hey Harry, how you doing man? <laughs> is a long-standing tradition in the black community that's been maintained for hundreds of years a fine system that encourages tardiness and places no strong value on punctuality. Oh, hey, did we already start? I was told three o'clock. Well, it's six now. Oh. That is terrible. Thank you. You know, I just keep it real. <laughs> and that's okay. and, it, and it's sad. Pause now, it real quick. She just she she rolled through the door three hours late. Three hours late, and said, "I just keep it real." And it's sad. A lot of a lot of a lot of Israel. We we roll in that same spirit. We roll up in there, like, "Hey, the part. Hey, you know, the party just started." No, this just started. no. That's not how we supposed to roll. That's not the spirit we. Because what we just read the definition that. It's you doing things with no regard to other people. You 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 ain't rolling in the spirit. That's not rolling in the repentant spirit. You rolling in the spirit of the world. You gotta throw away those youthful lusts. That's a youthful lust. You gotta let that go. Play the go ahead and play it. Now. to get somewhere when they want to, and not when they have to. <laughs> Tonight, we are honoring Jesse Hunter. She ain't here, it's Mama Christmas. <laughs> oh. Okay, well now, I know that our keynote speaker's here, because we told him his speech was yesterday, and he just got here five minutes ago. <laughs> so let us welcome Dusty Johnson. So, wait, wait, you mind that? Did you catch what the, she just said? No. Nah. Rewind that part where she said, she said, uh, she told somebody that the meeting was yesterday and he just got there five minutes ago. That, that's, that's, that's the, that's the wrong spirit. That's the wrong spirit to roll in. Play it. No speakers here because we told him his speech was yesterday and he just got here five minutes ago. But she said she told, so the, she well, told him that that mean that. He's he's so he's so bad with being late that they had to tell him, hey, the meeting is at at 9 p.m. Thursday night, so he can be on time for a meeting that's Friday morning at 10 o'clock. That's terrible. 
That's sad, and it's, and it's sad to say many of Israel roll like that. Hey, the wedding started at 2 o'clock. People come rolling in the door at 4 o'clock. You come rolling in the door at 4 o'clock, and the, the wedding's supposed to start at 2. The wedding's supposed to start at 3, but you come in an hour late. And then don't, 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 don't get to the point where it's like, no, nah, we starting. You got to wait. And then they get mad. <laughs> no, you late. That you out the spirit. So we, we have to understand that. Go, and then go back to what uh, in, uh, when we read the first scripture we read in 2 Timothy 3 and 16. That's reproof. Okay, we starting at this time. You come after that now. Or you come right at the time we're supposed to start. If, 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 the, if the wedding, say, it started at 3 and you, the guest supposed to arrive at 2, you're supposed to start arriving at 2. So when the wedding started at 3, everybody is in their seat. But if you come rolling at the door at 3 o'clock, oh, no, you got to wait because now we're starting. You got to wait about 15 minutes, and then we're going to let you in. You can't get mad because you're late. You're supposed to get here at 2 o'clock. But... That's another story. Let's finish that video. But that's that's sad that that's sad that you have to for people to come on time. You got to tell them that it's gonna start at. You got to tell them to start. It's gonna start two three hours before, so that you can start on time. That's terrible. That's not the spirit of. That's not that's not the spirit of this Bible. That's the spirit of the world. Play it. And not when they have to. <laughs> Tonight we are honoring Jesse Hunter. She ain't here. It's Mama Trip. Okay, well, now, I know that our keynote speaker's here because we told him his speech was yesterday and he just got here five minutes ago. <laughs> so let us welcome Dusty Johnson. Hey, y'all, time is out of control. Mm -hmm. You got Eastern Standard Time. You got Pacific Standard Time. You got Daylight Savings Time. It's ridiculous. Can't nobody remember all that stuff. You can't tell me nothing about time. And it's sad, a lot, of, it's, it's, a lot of us still struggle with that, the things you just said. A lot of us still struggle with that. Oh, this is my time. Oh, I ain't got no watch. <laughs> no, nah, man, you got to be conscious of the time so you ain't messing up somebody else's day. You ain't messing up your brother or sister day. Go ahead. Play, play, play the video. Brother, amen. amen. Now, look, I just got word that our other speaker isn't going to be. He is going to appear via satellite. So here is Lloyd Greenwood. So now, so Thank you. rewind it a little bit. Now, it's one, it's one thing that if, like, you, you know, it's one thing if the, if the stuff happens occasionally. We got some level of margin of error. Occasionally you may oversleep. Occasionally something happened where you late. But it's not supposed to be. A, a habitual thing where you just always late. You known as the guy that's going to be late. That's not supposed to be the spirit that we roll in. Play it. Amen, brother. Amen. Now, look, I just got word that our other speaker isn't going to make it. But he is going to appear via satellite. So here is Lloyd. So the Lincoln. other speaker is not going to make it, but he coming. He 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 going to be there via satellite. This is and this is. It's it's common it's it's a it's a um it's a uh, uh what you call it it's a comical skit, but this is how it this is how Israel is and it's sad to say this is how Israel is in the truth. This is not how you're supposed to be in the truth, right? That's a proverb. Uh, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, sorry I couldn't be there with you, but uh, I just woke up. Ain't even picked out what I'm gonna wear yet. Uh, and besides, so, the so man just pause it. Coming through. Pause it. So, just a, a, so just just quick pointers on some of the things that he just said. He said, and he he just casual like, ain't nothing wrong. 
like, yeah, you know, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. You know, I just woke up. Like, it ain't nothing. And then he's shaving. He live via satellite. Say, oh, I just woke up. I ain't even picked out what I'm going to wear yet. And it's sad. It's, and he, no, no, it's, no remorse. And remember, that's the same. That's the, we read out that definition. No regard for everybody else. You're supposed to be a speaker at an event, but you just woke up and you ain't even picked out. We don't even know what you're going to wear. You're supposed to have that stuff in line already. You're supposed to shave what, what we don't shave. But in the, in, in the light of the, the comical skit, he's shaving. Like, you're supposed to get all that stuff ready. You're supposed to get trimmed up. Get your, and being in the truth, you're supposed to, to groom your beard, get your hair groomed. Do that the day before. Don't do it two hours of you, or at the time you're supposed to be at the event. Go ahead. So here is Lloyd Greenwood. Hey, look here. Hey, uh, sorry I couldn't be there with you, but uh, I just woke up. I ain't even picked out what I'm going to wear yet. Uh, and besides, Cable Man supposed to be coming through, and they told me sometime between 4 and 6, well, I thank him, brother, so you know I ain't going to get here to 10. <laughs> It's all good. Hey, look here. If it's nothing else, I'm going to see y'all at the after party. Okay? All right. So he made no intentions to be there. That's how, that's how, that's a deceitful spirit. That's a deceitful spirit. That's how, that's how a lot of Israel roll. And we got to, we got to shake that spirit. It's a heavy demon, but we got to shake it. We got to get that spirit up off of us because we got work to do. We can't get work done and we always late. We always oversleeping. We always not delivering on our, our word. We, we always not showing up. We can't do that. We can't roll like that. That's the spirit of the world. Let's play the rest of that video. Now I will close by saying we've been late in the past. Yes. We're late in the present yes. and we shall be late in the future. Yes. Hell, we said we was coming, didn't we? <laughs> so then we gonna get there So that's not a spirit we're supposed to roll in. We got to shake that spirit. That's a, that's a useful lust. That's a spirit of the world, and we can't roll like that. Go to Sirach chapter 20 and verse 24. We got a couple more scriptures, and we'll be done. We can't roll that, that spirit, that colored people time, and that's that, that played Israel bad. We got to shake that spirit. When these events, like the events and things like that come up, if, if, a, if, if something's supposed to start at a certain time, you got to do everything in your power to make sure you're available and ready at that time. Because then you delay everything else. You push everything else off, the, off to the back burner, and it, it, it just throw everything in shambles. Within your control, you got to make sure you do what's necessary to make sure that you're not contributing to something starting late. Or you're not contributing to something not being able to happen because you wasn't able to keep your word. Read Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and verse 24. A lie is a foul blot in a man, yet it is continually in the mouth of the untaught. It says a lie is a foul blot in a man. When you always saying you're going to do something and you don't deliver, you're always saying you're going to be somewhere and you're never there. You're always saying you're going to be on time for this, you're going to do this and do that, and you're not doing it. It says it's a, flat, a foul blot, meaning everything you say, ain't nobody going to hear you. You're going to be speaking and it's going to go on deaf ears. It's going to be like that, that, um, uh, Charlie, what's, what's the name of that? It's going to be blah, 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 blah. Ain't nobody going to hear. Every time you speak, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, all right. Ain't nobody going to hear you. Even when you, even when you start correcting yourself and you actually start doing, it's going to take some time for you to shake that, 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 that reputation up off of you. So even if that's, if that's the case with you. Repent. You still, you still got time to repent, but you got to change that spirit and be consistent. But it's going to take a while for, for brothers and sisters to trust that you're going to you actually deliver your word. Because you, you, if you've done it so long where you ain't deliver your word, you got to build up that trust back. Because everything you say is it's literally going to be blah, 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 blah. Because you don't, you don't, you don't deliver what you say you're going to do. Read. Verse 25. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie. But they both shall have destruction to the heritage. 
So if you roll in that spirit and you don't repent, you continue to roll in that deceitful spirit because that's what it is. Destruction is waiting for you. Destruction is waiting for you. Don't deceive yourself. Destruction is waiting for you because you're rolling in the spirit of deceit. You're rolling in the spirit of lying. You're not rolling in the spirit of the most high. From there, go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Ephesians chapter 4 and 22. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The, the, the spirit that roll on color people time. The spirit that is always, hey, I'm five minutes away, but you're really 30 minutes away. That's the old man. The scripture tell us to put off concerning that former conversation. That's the former conversation. Hey, I'm right around the corner. You just rolled out the bed. That's not the spirit of the most high. That's not us walking in newness of life, being renewed in our spirit. Read. That's a deceitful lust. Read. Verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You have to realize and recognize that the world don't evolve around you. You have to remember and recognize that we, in the, the scripture say, gather yourselves together. You are, you are a piece of this puzzle of us getting, of the nation of Israel getting right. So you got to start keeping your words. You say you're going to do something, do it. You say you're going to be somewhere, be there on time. Get off colored people time. Get, put that away. It said be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You say you're an Israelite, you got to be a good represent, representative of being an Israelite. Read. Verse 24, and that she put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It says you put on the new man. So you can't be doing the same thing you was doing in the world. So nobody should be in the truth saying, oh, you know how black, you know how, you know how it is. We on black people time. What? I thought we was Israel. I thought we was Judah, Benjamin, Levi. I thought we was changed. We can't be talking about, oh, you know how, you know how it is. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just you know, that's just how Judah is. You know, that, that's just how, it's a kite. No, that's not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be changing. We're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, and we're supposed to be putting on a new man. Read. Verse 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. We are members one of another. So what I do affects you. What you do affects me. What we do as a whole, it affects everybody. If everybody's showing up two hours late because they own black people time, you just destroyed the whole event. Now people, let's say it's, it's, a, it's a, a new moon or a, a Passover or something, and people, you got people, let's say, let's say people ain't able to get the day off for work, and they come, they supposed to be at the school at 7 because we, 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 we got, a, you got an itinerary going, and people coming in at Nine, because you ain't got to go to work in the morning. But those that was here on time, let's say something happened with, let's say you, you performing. Now we can't have performances because all of the performance was late. So now those, that, those people that was here at seven, and those people that was here at seven, because they was on time, because they know they, they got to get up and go to work in the morning. Now they got to leave, and because you was late, the performances start late, and those people that was here on time, they left because they got to be at work in the morning. Now they missed the performance. You're selfish. You're only thinking about you. Outside of things that you can't control, you got to be on time. Because what you do affects your brother. It says, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. If, if it happens that you, you're supposed to be somewhere at 9 o'clock and you wake up at 9 you supposed to jump up, call, make that phone. Call. Hey man, I just woke up. Hey man, my bad. I'm gonna be there as soon as I as soon as I can. Hey, when 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 I'm when I get when I'm ready and I'm on my way, I'm gonna call you and give you an ETA at the time I'm gonna be there. You ain't supposed to wake up and be like, hey, I'm be I'm right around the corner. I'm on my way. You just woke. You still laying in the bed on the phone saying I'm on my way. No, you lying. I'm right around. The, somebody call you. Hey, bro, where you at? Hey, I'm right around the corner. No, you're not. You're lying. You're still in the bed. We got to put that spirit away from us. We can't roll in that spirit no more. It says, for we are members one of another. We got to understand that the things that we do affect the nation as a whole. So that, that's going to conclude the class. I pray that 
you were edified by this class, shalom, on sign Christ blood. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.